her, yeah. Yeah, at first it was about the baby. I just had to run to the altar. I had to cry out to God. But do you know what the weird thing is? I have a good husband. I mean a real good husband. He's a great provider. We have more than enough money. But there was still a void in my life. My husband, God bless his soul, loves me so much. And he's always asking me, aren't I enough for you? Aren't I better than any child, any ministry? I just smile at him, touch his face, and say, you just don't understand. And what he doesn't understand is there is still something missing. There is something that no man, no job, no child, no amount of money can ever fulfill. So I had to run to the only place where I knew I could find peace. I had to run to sanctuary. I had to run to Jesus. And when I fell down on my knees and called out his name, Jesus, here I am. I'm kneeling at your altar bowing at your feet. Here I am. Please feel my void. I was hollering and screaming so loud that the priest thought I was drunk. <laughs> I was drunk, I right. drunk in the spirit. And you know what? He impregnated me. That's right. I'm pregnant with a child, a new job, with ministry. But that truly isn't the miracle or the blessing of this. The blessing of this is he heard me, saw my need, Met me where I was. So you see, getting pregnant is just the result of me needing him. Because once you get to know him, <laughs> you'll never be the same. Girl, the other day, <laughs> after being with my boo, I was so doggone thirsty. But it wasn't a thirst that I can't even explain. It was, it was an emptiness inside. I've been feeling that way a lot lately. You know, thirsty for something that nothing seems to be able to quench. But anyway, I left my man satisfied, and I decided to walk to the well. When I got there, there was a man there. He asked me to give him some water. At first, I was like, wait a minute. Who do I look like? My name ain't Florence. You know how it is. Some of us so doggone headstrong that we get offensive with one, when a man asks us for one little thing. But then I was like, hey, he kind of cute, though technically... <laughs> He ain't even supposed to be talking to me, but you never know what this might lead to. But then he crossed the line. Had a nerd to ask me, where is my husband? I looked at him and I said, I ain't got one. He said, you're right. And the other five are not your husband either. Girl, I was like, okay, you go get your own water. <laughs> then he said, if you knew who I was and the gift I had to offer you, then you would have asked me for the water for that I offer you is living water. At first I was confused thinking, what is living water? But then it all came together. How he knew about me and my secrets and my mess and how I offered myself to anyone because I felt unworthy, but yet he felt me worthy enough to offer me something so precious, the living water that would never leave me thirsty for something else. It was that water that fulfills, that washes clean, he offered me life. He got me all excited because Jesus talked to a whore like me. But that wasn't the miracle or the blessing of it. I, too, am pregnant, pregnant with hope and a renewed spirit. You see, he heard my silent cries. He saw my need. He met me where I was. And I promise you, I am whole because of that living water. And I promise you, once you get to know him, you'll never ever be the same. Okay. I knew I was not supposed to be there. And I knew that people were not going to like me there. But I had to go see him. I heard and knew of the great things that he was doing for others. And I was just hoping that he would do the same for me. So I went in. Everybody was looking at me, pointing, whispering. I just kept going. I kept walking. It seemed like it was taking forever, but I was determined to keep going until I saw him. See, some of us give up too soon. We'd be right at the brink of a breakthrough, but then we lose our faith and turn our back on God. Not that day. I had to go see him. But when I got into his presence, all I could do was fall to my knees. I, 
I just knelt at his feet and I didn't even think that he would let someone like me touch him because I had no money. I don't meet church folk standards, but I still had something to offer the king. He didn't push me away, so I took me, my secrets, my hurts, my pain, my potential, my trust, and my faith, and I poured it onto his feet and I began to wash it with my hair. I didn't care who was looking. I didn't even care what they were saying. You see, they'll never understand my praise because they don't know my struggles. They'll never know why I have to worship him the way that I do because they don't know what I've been through. But now when you see me, hallelujah, you see the results of me meeting him. I too am pregnant with forgiveness. You see, he heard my silent cries and he saw my need and he met me where I was and I'm forgiven because what I had to offer, he accepted it. And I promise, I promise, I promise once you get to know him, once you get to know him, once you get to know him, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, once you get to know him, you will never, ever, ever be the same. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. I am like Hannah. I sought the Lord. He heard my cry. Because he loved me, I have purpose. Have you ever prayed so hard about a thing? You knew God was going to move. Didn't know how. Didn't know when. But you knew God was going to move. He thought you was crazy. I thought you were drunk. I thought you was out of your mind. But have you ever ran to the almighty God and he heard your everlasting cry? Not only did he give her the baby, he blessed the baby. I am pregnant. I am pregnant. I am pregnant. And one day, you'll see my baby come forth. You'll see him come forth. You'll see him come forth. You'll see him come forth. I'm a woman of purpose. I was, 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 I was, I was, I was, I was the woman at the well. But when I encountered Jesus, when I saw the way he looked at me, without a word, he didn't speak a word, without a word, I saw the way he looked at me. He saw beyond my flaws. He saw beyond my sin. He saw beyond what I was. And when I saw Jesus, he changed me. He saw the real me. He looked inside the depths of me. He looked inside who I was and he saw the real me. Jesus touched me and I was the woman at the well but the gift that Jesus gave me was the gift of hope and he restored my soul and he healed my heart and I no longer looked at love in, in medial things and temporal things that didn't mean anything I was the woman at the well but today I am redeemed Wow, I am like the woman with the alabaster box. <laughs> Only he could break. It needed to be broken. But now, when I praise him, it ain't because somebody told me to. I praise him because I love him. I praise him because when I would have lost my mind, he gave me peace in the middle of the storm. I praise him because when I thought I was all alone, he came right where I was. I praise him because he said he was seeking for those that would worship him in spirit and in truth. And he came where I was. And I laid him on the I laid it at his feet. You'll never understand my praise. Don't try to figure it out. Don't try to figure it out. You won't there the night he found me. You weren't there when he wrapped 
his loving arms around me. You don't know the cost. You don't know the cost. You don't know the cost of the oil in my alabaster box. You'll never understand it. No, I shouldn't be here, but I'm here. No, I shouldn't open up my mouth and praise, but I'm a praise him. No, it's this hard sometimes, but even in the midst of it being hard, I must press, press, bring the all out, bring the all out, bring the treasure out, bring the all out, God. So not only am I like the woman with the alabaster box, you or like the women with the alabaster box. Jesus, 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 hallelujah. Praise your name, God. Ah, I show that out. Our blood sister, Naomi Montgomery. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Come on, lift your voice. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so tonight. Come on, lift your voice, Zion. If you have been redeemed, if you have been purchased, can there anything good come out of Moab tonight? I'm here to tell you that there's something good that can come out of Moab tonight. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Is there anything good can come out of Moab? Tonight? Just want to say good evening to everyone. It has been an awesome evening thus far, amen. Are you excited? Are you on the edge of your seat for real? God is up to something mighty. Do you believe that tonight? Just want to take a moment, and I know if it's already be done, but I just want to do it because I'm a daughter. I just want to give a, an appreciation to my Lily Allen. Let's just re thank God for her tonight. thank God for her. Let me tell you something, and could you turn me up just a little bit with my microphone, because I am a little bit hoarse. I just need a little bit of help. Is that all right? <laughs> Ma, let me tell you something. I was at my job, and uh, this song came to me, and y'all going to trip out when you hear what song came to me when I thought about Ma Lily Allen. It was a, I'm coming out. And I thought, God, I need to be purged. Why is this song coming to me? And I just feel like this is your time. I just believe that we have not seen anything yet. If we have ever needed you, Lord, 